Magandang umaga Pilipinas, ako si Francis Orsio at ito ang Panayam sa Panahon TV. Bilang isang bansang nakararanas ng karaniwan sa dalawampung bagyo kada taon at iba't iba pang uri ng kalamidad na kung saan ay nagiiwan din ito ng pinsala hindi lamang sa buhay ng mga tao kundi pati na rin sa kapaligiran at mga infrastruktura. Kaya mahalagang maayos at handa sa pagresponde ang mga kinauukulan sa panahong naglilipana ang mga sakuna. Ngunit maituturing na sapat na ba ang ginagawa ng gobyerno para maging handa at ligtas ang bawat Pilipino? Sapat na rin ba ang kahandaan ng mga ipinatayong pampublikong infrastruktura at espasyo sa bansa at mga pamantayang kanilang ipinatutupad? Para malaman ng sagot, makakasama natin ang isang landscape architect at urban planner na si Mr. Paulo Alcazaren. Magandang umaga sir at welcome po sa Panahon TV. Uh, good morning Francis at magandang umaga sa lahat ng nakikilig at na nanonood. Okay, sir. Sir, para sa unang katanungan natin, maaari nyo bang maipaliwanag sa amin kung ano nga ba itong urban planning at kahalagahan po nito? Well, ang urban planning is uh, ang pagpaplano na, ng mga lungsod at bayan sa, sa Pilipinas, sa, sa kahit sang bansa. No? At ang, um, ang tinitingnan ng isang planner eh, yung pag-design ng uh, espasyo sa pinakamalaking konteksto ng uh, pagdidibuho. May mga arkitekto tayo ang ang kanilang uh, focus ay eh, yung ma gusali mga struktura ng ating mga uh, ginagamit natin. Teksto nito ay eh, yan ang uh, pinaplano ng uh, urban designer or city planner. May diferensya yung urban planning sa urban design. Yung urban planning ay eh, mas maliit yung scope of work uh, kumpara sa urban planning. Yung urban planning, yung buong lungsod ang pinaplano. In fact, yung environmental planning ang uh, official na official na, na description sa ating uh, professional regulation commission. So environmental planning is a bigger scope na sakop yung uh, planning. Uh, kasama to yung provincial and regional planning. Pero sa urban design naman, in between yung ginagawa ng uh, city planner at ginagawa ng arkitekto or landscape architect ang urban design. So yung urban design ang design ng mga plaza, mga uh, uh, daanan ng uh, uh, vehicle at saka pedestrian Uh, ang mga civic spaces, yan ang ginagawa ng uh, urban design. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Ngayon napaliwanag naman sa amin kung ano yung urban planning at saka yung mga interchangeable terms nga like yung urban design, environmental planning, and among other this terms. Ano-ano naman, sir, yung mga pangkalahatang pangunahing salik o key factors na isinasaalang-alang po para sa urban planning? So in urban planning, or city planning, ang factors na tinitingnan ng planner is of course, unang-una yung uh, socio-economic framework at saka yung political framework ng isang lungsod o isang bayan. Ito yung konteksto. At uh, uh, titingnan ng uh, planner yung economic development plan ng isang uh, lugar, be it a city or a town, pero kailan uh, naka-align din to sa econ- economic development plan ng uh, probinsya at uh, rehiyon i-align dapat nila after consultation with mga stakeholders uh, yung uh, physical infrastructure ng isang lungsod o bayan which is uh, vehicular and pedestrian circulation utilities power water light at saka ang um, ang uh, kinalalabasan nitong coordination Uh, yung uh, tinatawag na Comprehensive uh, Land Use Plan or CLUP. By law, kailangan i-revise to every 9 to 10 years o kumbaga three terms ng, ng uh, mayor. Uh, and it has to align with the Economic Development Plan and uh, nagsiset to ng framework within which yung physical development ng lungsod o bayan ay papasok. So the problem of traffic is a symptom of uh, w- walang uh, magandang coordination sa infrastructure level at saka sa land use planning. Ito rin ang uh, dahilan kung ba't uh, uh, nagkakroon na ng baha 
Uh, dahil hindi rin maplano yung yung kailangan ng infrastructure for drainage sa road infrastructure kasi yung road infrastructure halos um, overlap to sa sa drainage infrastructure hindi ma, hindi maganda ang drainage systems kung hindi maganda ang road systems kasi usually yan lang ang pwedeng lalagyan na ng ating mga drainage uh, canals at saka uh, drainage pipes at saka yung sewage din natin So everything is about uh, alignment. Uh, ang pagpaplano ay nangangailangan talaga ng magandang um, uh, framework development at comprehensive land use plan. Mm. Yes, sir. So basically, there's or there's a lot of considerations pala when it comes to urban planning. As an urban planner naman, sir, ano naman yung mga karaniwang problema na kinakaharap ninyo pagdating sa pag urban planning? Yung problema ng uh, planning sa Pilipinas uh, at the city level or town level, pero ganoon na rin sa provincial level. Yung proseso ng pagdawa ng comprehensive land use plan is a 12-step process. In this process, uh, nag-uumpisa ito ng, uh, ng pag-identify ng mga stakeholders ng, uh, sa citizens, yung business, uh, business stakeholders, uh, economic stakeholders, ma uh, social stakeholders at different levels ng uh, economic strata, ang um, ang ang lahat ng uh, non uh, non government organizations at government organizations na may may kinalaman sa uh, development o, o may interest sa uh, uh, sa CLUP. Pag na identify yung stakeholders. Um, Diyan lang pwede mag-umpisa yung proseso ng consultation at paggawa ng uh, mission and uh, vision ng lungsod o bayan. So kung hindi ma-identify lahat ng uh, dapat kasama sa pag-uusap, um, doon nagkakaproblema. Down the road, pag na, nasa step 5, 6, or 7, or 8, yun, yun pala hindi mo na konsulta itong isang grupo, urban pool, Uh, gen, uh, uh, women's uh, groups uh, dyan lalabas yung problema kasi hindi sila kinonsulta so number one uh, problem is uh, yung identification proper identification ng state stakeholder groups number two uh, on the part ng uh, ng lungsod o, o bayan um, yung kapasidad ng uh, planning office either the municipal uh, planning and development office o kaya yung city planning and development office um karamihan eh kulang yung plantilya nila it is supposed to be headed by a licensed and registered uh, environmental planner ang problema ko konti pa lang yung environmental planner na may sapat na experience in in uh, producing the CLUPs or in any of the problems of uh, of uh, city planning no uh, uh, third problem is yung hindi nakikitang uh, mga problema ng uh, climate change or national uh, 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 natural disasters um, of course alam natin lahat na nag-iiba yung yung uh, yung ating climate at ang uh, effect nito is that yung assumptions natin sa pagpaplano ng infrastructure especially yung sa uh, coastal towns and cities eh, kailangan baguhin yung assumptions na mas mas malala yung mga mga bagyo na dumarating mas malakas ang uh, hangin mas mas uh, mas malaki yung problema ng ng uh, uh, erosion at slope slope protection nagkakro ng uh, landslide at saka yung baha of course so unseen That's the third thing, unseen factor. Um, and the fourth factor is really isang problema na hindi na address sa buong Pilipinas in the last century. The biggest factor, kung tatanungin mo, uh, mo ang, uh, ang, ang uh, planner, is population. Because the Philippines has no uh, uh, clear population management uh, program. Yung biggest factor in planning for uh, a city is to plan for its growth, no? Ang nangyayari, mataas pa rin yung population expansion uh, ng Pilipinas, population growth, especially sa mga mga 
uh, siyudad, mga lungsod na uh, business business centers. So yung population ng Manila, for example, uh, nag-umpisa to nung, nung uh, 1905 na 250,000 lang, e eh, ngayon ay 12 million. So population is one of the biggest factors in uh, in uh, planning. So yun ang major um, uh, factors in in kung ba't uh, hindi hindi maganda ang pagplanning uh, ng cities and towns sa Pilipinas. Okay sir, based on the factors or the reasons kung bakit nga may mga problema ang urban planning dito sa bansa. Ano kaya sir yung nagpapahad lang para maipatubad ng maayos yung urban planning dito sa bansa natin. Ano yung mga kumbaga, dahilan bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng ganitong problema? Yeah, number one is yung capacity building. Kailangan ma-address yung, yung uh, pagpukulang sa, 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 sa plantilya. Uh, and that can be addressed by uh, bringing in, may pasok natin na mas maraming uh, environmental plan na may experience. Uh, number two is uh, on uh, on the sa mga sanggunian naman uh, karamihan ng at mga konsehal o mga representatives ng uh, tao hindi rin um, hindi rin aral hindi din lang din nila alam yung proseso so kailan may training din sila so yung civically uh, yung uh, elected officials also need to be trained in, in the requirements of uh, uh, environment up uh, city planning or physical planning uh, so yung mga officials yung mga tao sa planning uh, departments uh, pwedeng enhance uh, sana yung education nila at saka yung experience um, on the other hand yung mga stakeholders din it will not work na puro spot spot zoning spot uh, development kailangan talaga sumunod sa sa plano at ay konsulta lahat ng stakeholders. Let's talk about Metro Manila. As we all know, isa pa rin talaga sa malaking problema natin dito ang pagbaha dahil sa pagulan at kahit na hindi bagyo ang nagpapaulan sa Metro Manila o kaya naman ay mahinang pagulan lamang yung nararanasan natin ay nagiiwan pa rin ito ng pagbaha. Now my question is, what can we do, especially the authorities or the government and other stakeholders to make urban planning better in Metro Manila? Yeah, I think Pinakamalaking uh, problema sa Metro Manila related to flooding or kahit anong urban problem natin, flooding, uh, pollution, air pollution, noise pollution, uh, is, is really the fact na uh, 17 LGUs ang Metro Manila at uh, in the, fairly independent yung mga uh, programa nila. There are 17 comprehensive land use plans na hindi maganda ang uh, alignment to each other. So, uh, ang sinasabi nga nila sa noon na uh, ang problema ng Metro Manila ay eh, walang political will. Ang, sin- ang sagot ko naman dyan, hin- ay hindi yan ang problema. Ang problema natin ay eh, 17 political wills. Uh, Metro Manila has 17 political wills. Kung hindi ito coordinated, may, may council of of Metro Manila mayors uh, nagmi-meet sila I think once a month pero there there is nothing that compels hindi hindi by law hindi kailangan sumunod sa isang sa isang vision isang uh, metro plan so hin, hindi makagawa ng buong metro plan na kailangan mo kung yung infrastructure mo is to address Uh, kagaya ng uh, tubig baha, flooding problem, hindi naman titigil sa border ng, ng Quezon City at Manila yung tubig baha o yung krimen o yung pollution. All of these problems do not recognize political boundaries. Yung, pero yung governance ng Metro Manila eh, naka, naka-partition into 17 LGUs. So nothing will work. So hindi lang 17 political wills. May 18 of national government line agencies, DPWHP, Philippine Ports Authority, LLDA. Maraming uh, kasama dapat uh, na naka-align in terms of the overall vision and a master plan for, say, a comprehensive transport system for Met- Metro Manila. You will never solve yung, yung problem or yung symptom ng, of traffic unless you address it from that point. So governance ang malaking... Uh, 
uh, sa gabal sa any progress in 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 uh, physical development. So basically, sir, is it it's still possible na kasi nga um, you mentioned that there are uh, may mga pagkakamali na or kakulangan noon and over the past few years nakita natin yung kakulangan sa urban planning dito sa Metro Manila. The question is, is it still possible na uh, mabago pa yung urban planning and mas mapa-improve pa? Lalo na ngayon na uh, Metro Manila is a very congested place. Tapos, um, we really lack green spaces. Um, yung mga ganitong pagtingin ba is possible pa na mapa-improve yung um, ganitong sitwasyon? Ang tinatanong mo, kung may pagkasa pa ang Metro Manila, ang sagot yes, pa- sir very very slim chance of and um, kasi it's 12 12 plus million 13 million during the day dahil yung urban areas from NCR uh urbanized din yan so hindi lang metro ang ang konteksto ng pagpaplano kundi metro manila and buong NCR which is a region so it's regional development and planning it's metropolitan uh, and it will, it's the most difficult situation in a malitang chance to correct it because it we have gotten to this after over 50 years of unplanning 50 years of not non-alignment of uh lahat ng programa kahit sabihin pinag-aaral ang dami puro puro pag-aaral at pag-ano ng ng uh ng gobyerno walang may 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 tutupad walang na i na kompleto may may flooding flooding program tayo na kalahati lang ang naitayo kaya nagbabaha pa yung manggahan floodway dapat na complement ng Paranaque floodway pero hindi na 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 nagawa yung Paranaque floodway kaya nagpa-flood so a lot of the programs uh, were planned comprehensively but were never implemented mainly because of political problems no and uh, and ang ang uh, ang solusyon is to plan comprehensively to realign yung uh, governance structure to to para ma-acknowledge na dapat talaga comprehensive metropolitan governance within a larger context of NCR uh, physical uh, development physical dial sa climate change because yung uh, pinanggagalingan ng tubig baha ay yung Cedro Madre yung bundok sa 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 western and eastern mountain ranges uh, dahil yung yung metro manila is parang parang uh, parang basin yan diyan diyan pupunta yung tubig ba dahil wala nang uh, punong kaayo sa mga uh, ranges na yan at urbanization has also reduced yung capacity of the surrounding areas to absorb so it is all interrelated and it It's planning based on um, earth sciences. Pagkausap mo mga politiko, ay, ay naman nila i-redefine yung mga political boundaries dahil politics yan. Mawawala yung kanilang mga power base, mga botante. No? Di natin baguhin yung framework ng ating governance at saka planning. Wala tayong ma-address na problema. Um, Okay, sir, going back to what you have mentioned earlier na Metro Manila is a catch basin, sir. Um, and one of the major protected areas to control flooding in NCR, in Metro Manila, is the Upper Marikina River Basin. So, isa, isa ito sa mga river basin yes. nga dito sa Metro Manila to control flooding. However, um, over the past few years, several projects uh, near the basin contribute to its to its deterioration, yung pagkasira nga nito. Such projects like um, quarrying projects, expansion of real estate projects, um, hydropower projects, kaya na nga lang din nitong Kaliwadam, and among other projects. And if they will continue these projects, posible po, di ba, na mas lalong titindi yung pagbaha sa Metro Manila. Now, my question is, should the government condemn this at dapat ba nila itong ipatigil, yung mga proyektong ito? Oh, because without saying that, dapat may monitorium on development in that basin. But how would you implement that? Because uh, of the uh, decentralization uh, of of governance to cities uh, based on the 1991 law, um, in uh, malakas, mas malakas ngayon yung mga lungsod natin kumpara sa before 1990 na 
decision making is centralized in in Metro Manila, no, or or provincial capitals. So it's difficult to to get the cities. Hindi lang Marikina, but the uh, the the towns, uh, cities above and around it, uh, contribute to the whole mess. And then, of course, uh, the Department of DNR, although the new sec- cabinet secretary is a very good per, uh, person for environmental concerns, um, yan ang challenge niya, kagaya ng uh, previous uh, uh, secretary, si Gina Lopez, or, or convincing people to to ban mining, to ban quarrying, to put a moratorium of development. So it's uh, the the yung agenda ng ng uh, uh, ng miners or uh, na kasagwat yung local government officials often I'm not I, I'm not pointing fingers at who but all of this in the name of progress hindi na nakikita nila yung impact sa larger larger district and larger region so if you localize yung decision making and they consult only within that area hindi nila alam na cumulatively lahat ng decision nila na for for more uh, subdivision development for more commercial development will contribute to paglaki ng problema na yan so uh, unless you ban everything within the marikina um, then it will contribute to flooding in Metro Manila. Although hindi lang yan ang, uh, uh, if you look at the central plains, isa pa yung uh, contributor. So if you look at yung mga plano ng, say, yung uh, international airport sa Bulacan, so Kamanaba is really a natural, uh, 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 parang parang sponge yan for all, uh, all of the rainwater. Kung i-block nyo yan, malaki ang impact sa uh, environmental uh, balance at uh, lalala yung flooding problem not only Metro Manila but the entire region which is, which is already suffer for, suffering from uh, ground subsidence and the uh, loss of water sa aquifer yung tubig sa ilalim Okay sir, for the last part of this interview naman sir, since naging complex and comprehensive yung naging discussion natin for today, ano naman sir yung mensahe nyo sa ating mga manonood, sa publiko and especially sa mga kinauukulan uh, related to urban planning? Well, for one thing, for sa mga kabataan natin na may interest at all in 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 planning or design, uh, gaya na sabi ko, there are uh, only about 6,000 planners but there are 60,000 architects no um there are 81 uh, provinces and 145 cities 1500 all of them need uh planning uh officers of uh environmental or urban planners so uh the planning profession uh is in need of of people so if you can go uh, punta niyo yung site ng Philippine Institute of Environmental Planners makikita niyo yung opportunities for for yung profession of planning so the the government needs planners uh, private development needs planners uh, the whole filipino people need planners to assist government officials and uh, citizens in proper planning because if you cannot plan properly uh, then nothing will be solved Okay po. Okay sir, so kaya naman sa ating mga manonood, kami lang na rin ang mga nasa kinauukulan at ang pamahalaan, isang panawagan din ito sa atin na higit pa sa kagandahan ng mga pinatatayong infrastruktura, ang kahalagahan at kaganda o kahandaan at kaligtasan ng mamamayang Pilipino sa panahong sunod-sunod na nangyayari ang mga sakuna. Isa na ang urban planning para mas maging higit pa ng matugunan ang mga sakunang nararanasan bilang isa na disaster-prone country. Kaya naman maraming salamat po din dahil sa inyo, Sir Paulo Alcazarin, dahil pinaulaka nyo kami ngayong umaga. Maraming salamat din, Francis. Okay, Sir. Uh, muli ito ang programang walang pinipiling panahon ng pagbibigay ng impormasyon. Si Francis Orso at ito ang Panayam sa Panahon TV.